So I just had my personal sword and stone experience of the tour thus far. And a really peak experience of life, actually. And it was having left Robert the Bruce's cave and driven through northwest Scotland and Galloway, heading towards the port to take me across the Irish Sea into Ireland. And I must say I had a lot of hesitation and reticence about going that far, you know, whether or not I'd be able to, yeah, we were getting all the warnings about not traveling and I'd be a foreigner there. And what might that mean? You know, I'd heard reports of people getting fines and prison sentences even. So there was quite a deep level of concern, but it was magnified and amplified by feeling the sense of being that the Robert the Bruce felt and other leaders before him, a renegade, an outlaw, what it feels to be that in a place that doesn't fully accept you. And of course, we as light workers, we all feel that plenty of times anyway. So I, I got to the port, or I was driving to the port actually, the other evening, and the energy was building. I was a bit late, so that so I was, I was speeding. I'd seen no police on the roads, but I overtook a particular truck close to a bend, and who should be coming the other way but a police van? And I had to swerve a little bit, but fortunately it didn't turn around. So, yeah, I was, I was fortunate at that point. And then I got a flat tire. Uh, tire exploded. And managed to get it fixed, but it, was, it made me late for that crossing. And so I spent the night short of the ferry port. And there were a lot of internal processes going on. Usually when I... When I feel a movement to do something, it lands first as higher knowing, a flash. Then I feel the heartfelt pull. And then I'm already seeing elements of, of future landing now, parts of the future puzzle, the landscape. I can usually see those things, and so I know the energy is meant to be going there. And as I put my attention on Ireland, I could see little aspects of it, but I couldn't feel it all weaving together. And this was because I could feel this churning physical density inside of me. And it felt like I was empathizing with leaders and kings and other people who step out and, and work to make a difference. And at the apex of it all, which was like, Five minutes before, having, having spent the whole night working through this, five minutes before the cutoff point about going for the ferry or not, and leading up to that, I'd, been, I, I'd felt as if I'd been run through by a hundred swords. That's how it felt. Wow. Wow. Deep, deep, challenging, emotionally traumatic experience. But it is, as I, as I worked on it, and this is the whole thing about the open hand breakthrough approach, is when you're unsure about what to do, whether to go this way or that, it's not the outcome that counts. You're working toward it, but it's what does the unresolution generate inside? So that's what I was focusing on. And at five minutes before the decision time, the pain subsided it eased, and then a little synchronistic flow said, come on, come on, let's go and do this. Let's go and do this. This is, after all, a tour of Great Britain. Okay, okay. And it's that little flow that took me across into Ireland. And driving in Ireland, wow. It was like being on tenterhooks the whole way. I was the only car, practically the only car, for miles and miles and miles, certainly the only English car. And uh, I was warned there'd be checkpoints all over the place. As it was, there weren't any. 
And the flow managed to steer me up to the, the hill of Tara. And so I, I made it there. The, the green Tara was calling. And it was a very magical experience. But really it was the, it was the build up to it. And it was the energy of the Scottish Robert the Bruce that carried me through Ireland in a peaceful way, shall we say, a peaceful way. So with that in mind, here is my sharing of my experience of the Green Tara. I trust you enjoy. Cross the Irish Sea next, into Ireland. For meeting with the Green Tara. <laughs> Almost without my hat. <laughs> traveled all the way around Britain, or at least uh, probably three quarters of it by now, uh, through England, through the Lake District, through Scotland, across to Northern Ireland, and now the Republic of Ireland there, yeah, at the Hill of Tara. And I really wanted to come here. It drew me, as soon as I heard about it, it spoke to me and to others of the Green Tara, the Buddhist energy, it has, it very much has that energy with it. So what's important about this site is that it's a site of 142 kings and queens from the past. Wow, so they would have lived up here in their fortress basically, defended from all directions. But really the key is sovereignty. Sovereignty, that's the word that jumps right out as I, as I came here. You know, I was the only one, I was the only English person on the road, and there were very few people on the roads, obviously because of the lockdown, but it felt really important to me to express my freedom, express my sovereignty. And um, so I persevered, just like Robert Bruce, taking some of his energy or wor working with it. I persevered, and the flow found its way through. I got through with, without any really serious problems, apart from an exploding tire. But that was just a test. That was just a test of the old nerves. <laughs> but it got me here, on time where I needed to be, and some pleasant surprises, because there are a lot of people who are clearly not complying with the bureaucratic, oppressive, draconian orders to lock down and not come out of your house. So it's good to see people getting up here and having, having fun and getting fresh air, you know. Some of these statements, stay home, save lives. I mean, what utter nonsense is that? You do not quarantine healthy and, sit and fit people. And if you lock fit, healthy and fit people down, of course they're gonna get ill. <laughs> Their immune systems are going to be, yeah, degraded and they're gonna get sick. No surprises that this one is called the Mound of Hostages. 
actually makes me feel a little queasy. <laughs> I can feel the solar plexus contracting. And I think the uh, crows are reflecting that. It's clear that some energy needs to be moved. So I shall take some time, sit down and, and work to release whatever might be here. Yeah, I can definitely feel the earthbound here. So to work with an earthbound, an earthbound soul, you need to create some kind of bridge. You need to create something that they associate with, the, the soul associates with. Because with an earthbound, what happens is when they pass on, there's some strong level of attachment to the place they were at. And uh, so when the, when the body dies, the, the mind creates an energy body and the soul attaches to that, so they become earthbound. And to release them is to create some kind of bridge. So something that they, the dog's barking too. <laughs> it's another synchronicity. And the key is when you're working with earthbounds, when you feel them, as I've been feeling them, is to form a bridge. Get a sense of what would connect as a bridge into that consciousness. You can ask, show me, and synchronistically I was shown the Christ consciousness. And so what I'm going to do is go into a quiet meditation and get a sense of connecting with the Christ consciousness and then working to bridge and bring that energy out through me so I can feel, I can feel the connection, I can feel the energy, it's quite, it's quite deep, it's quite buried. But I'm working to bring it out through me. So I embody the Christ consciousness in the heart. And form an opening bridge. Despite the distractions. You know, hey, they're just living. This is life, isn't it? Just incredible. But hey. That's life. <laughs> so, so, so it would seem. So just feeling the opening, just feeling the softening. Letting the energy come up through me, inviting it to come through you. Yeah, it's beginning to release now. It's beginning to move. You can feel it. Yeah. At least some, anyway, at least some. These sites, they can take a long time to really move all the energy. And then just give it the sense of openness. Also the connection to the church. The church is very nearby. They'll obviously feel a resonance with that if they're connected to the Christ consciousness. So just getting a sense of that, I can feel definitely now the energy is moving in that direction. It just wants to move me naturally in that way. <laughs> yeah, very strongly. <laughs> very fascinating. Yeah, wow. So you've got to go with the empathy of feeling and not let mind control you and just let the flow itself take you. So it's taking me in this direction quite strongly. And the energy is moving out. So what I like about this site are the trees. The trees in a circle. And uh, they'll form a movement of energy out. So yeah, it feels like this is the place to bring the energy to. Take it into this circle. Just again with heartfelt intention heartfelt connection and just allow the energy to go off in that direction. Yeah. Yeah. Feels like it's releasing. So this is the Hill of Tara held by a beautiful Celtic cross.
I'm so pleased, so thrilled to have come here, connected with the energies. Feels like it's a very, uh, yeah, poignant place, a significant place in Ireland. Well worth visiting, well worth coming to and feeling the energies of. Yeah, I'm sure that the energies will ripple out far and wide from here. So I'm really glad you could see a little bit of this beautiful sight. I trust that if you feel it, empathize with it, you can take in some of the beautiful energy. And this speaks to me of freedom. Freedom. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's not worth giving that up at any price. Just to conclude with, I thought I'd share with you the energy from Scotland that brought me through Ireland. Thank you. 